Welcome to Gary's Hobby Studio and in this video I'm going to be discussing uh, miniature paints um, and show you some other paints that I use and I'm experimenting with uh, and if and if you uh, have been following along at all and liking what you see please like and subscribe uh, they'll, uh, they'll be at the end of the video plus you know if you can just go down hit the bell icon after you click subscribe and select all and that way you'll be notified of any new videos that I create so with that said let's get started the first brand um, that I started using a lot before I tried a few other ones is uh, Vallejo and they have quite a few um, paint lines the first one's model color uh, this one it, they it's can go for both uh, like fantasy and that like you know goblins and stuff but it can also do uh, regular stuff like you know for the walking dead and other types of games like that including military models because uh, that's what this line's primarily for and it's huge it's like 200 and some paints but i think some of that's like their mediums like uh the matte varnish gloss varnish, satin varnish, and some other uh, mediums. If you go to their website, acrylusvallejo.com, which I'll post the link in the description to it, uh, if you click on, once you uh, click on English, you, down, you click on downloads and you can go to their page and it has like all their pamphlets that covers all of their lines, which I happen to have picked up some when I was at Origins game fair a couple of years ago actually last year I'm hoping that it's still gonna happen this year and I happen to pick up some of their pamphlets just so that I have a paper copy too and this is about their model washes I don't have any of these uh, there's probably some that I don't but I have a good bit of the Vallejo products uh, but yeah I started buying these uh, at Hobby Lobby when they were like really cheap I mean they were like two bucks now they're like four you know it was like 199 now they're 499 uh, plus you get 40% off so I mean I picked up a good number of these from Hobby Lobby and if you have one nearby you know you can pick up they have a small range of it plus they have a few packs uh, they have like rust and stains and streaking which I picked that up because I didn't have those paints and uh, some of those were like in their uh, I want to say model airline and, and that but uh, the paints are thick uh, and basically, they you you have to like really shake them or stir them up or something. I would recommend because this is what I've I've done is that I put stainless steel ball bearings. Uh, if you search online, you could probably find some. I would avoid Amazon because you don't know what you're getting because they're not sold by Amazon; they're sold by other people. Um. I found a website uh, that sold them and I picked up like 3,000 of them. Uh, it was pretty expensive. So the Army Painter I know sells them in groups of 100 for like 6 or 7 bucks. If you look online you might be able to find a discount. But I drop one in and, and as you can hear, that's the bearing inside. And it agitates it because it goes through, hits the bottom, and then when it comes up, it's pulling paint up, mixing it with the binder. And you shake it, or if you have one of those um, shaking machines where you know you just press the bottle down on it and it agitates it, or the Robart, or I'm um, thinking about trying the one from Amazon. It's just a little uh, nail polish shaker, which is similar to the Robart. It's also a lot cheaper too because the Robart on there is like around 60 bucks that one's like 26 you know so it's like half I would definitely go with that one before the Robart unless you see that you're burning through it and then obviously probably the other one would be better but this way I can shake them by hand and it mixes them up and that way I'm not because if, if you just take it uncap it and squirt it out you're just gonna squirt binder out you're not gonna the pigment's still going to be inside and it'll start hitting and it's not going to be enough and then once you run out of binder then obviously it's not going to it's just sludge after that but i do recommend vallejo i really like it um it's less expensive if you look around you can find it uh 
relatively inexpensive for like two to three bucks instead of like because i think the msrp is like five or, or almost five something like that because they don't list it and every website i've been to is different um i mean you could definitely go to your local hobby store if you want to do that but you're going to pay because i think the one hobby store that's uh up north past pittsburgh I think they want like four ninety nine or five ninety nine a, a bottle, and that's almost as much as buying Reaper. I mean, not Reaper, um, Citadel, which that's the next one that I'm gonna show you. Because um, their stuff's almost like five bucks. It's like four fifty, and you just get a little, like short little pot of paint. It's only twelve milliliters for like five bucks. And at least you're getting seventeen, and you're also getting in dropper bottles where you can control it. Like if you know somebody says you know two parts of this color, one part of this color, you can drop two drops of this color, and then the other color, one drop of that. There's your two to one ratio, where you know everybody's ratios maybe because they're using a certain size brush. I know Sir Astro does his by by um, brush instead of drops because you know he uses a good bit of citadel that's why i like these because i can keep this in control of how many i drop so uh model color is one of theirs uh the next one and i'll show you the other ones from that but i want to cover the main ones that are most popular with brands most popular with uh most hobbyists uh, Citadel is another one. Now, you'll notice that this isn't a dropper bottle. That's because there's a uh, video, which if I can, I'll link it in the description or maybe put it in the card, depending upon which I can do, to convert your Citadel from the pots into this because the Citadel lids get where it, it goes over top. There's a, a little, like, indented uh, lip that goes, you know, so, so that the two meet. Well, what happens is that little uh, re uh, indented edge that grasps around the top of the cap to give it, you know, to hold on so the cap doesn't open, it starts building up paint. And eventually, it'll dry there, and then it'll cause it to, to the cap won't seat correctly. So if it doesn't seat correctly, then air is going to get in there, and it's just going to turn it into a giant dry sludge. I actually had that happen to me. So I've converted a lot of these to uh, to dropper balls, and it works really good. And I did the same thing. I put a BB in there, or a stainless steel ball bearing. Same thing. It helps mix it up, and it's great. Plus, with the way it is, uh, you thin it out a little bit, and this way it's it's not so thick. It's not a big, thick paste. So uh, Citadel's the second one because when I started following Sir Astro's tutorials for painting Star Wars Imperial Assault, he used a lot of this and believe me i did not like the price of it like i said 450 for that and it's uh, like i said this i know this stuff's expensive and believe me but i try to find things as reasonably priced as possible sometimes i win sometimes i lose but citadel is the next uh brand that's popular among miniature painters another brand is uh reaper and Reaper has uh, their Master Series paints. Uh, they did have their HD Series paints. They did away with it. All they did was just take the names and re-label it as a different brand. Instead of HD, it's now something else. You'd have to go to ReaperMini.com to see what it's called. But uh, uh, this one I just picked up recently called Adamantium Black because it's going to help me with a couple of projects that I have in mind. And supposedly the Reapers are already thinned down enough that you should be able to airbrush with them. Uh, I did, I don't remember if, I know I shot this through my airbrush and I don't remember if I, I don't think I thinned it down, but I, I might have thinned it down a little bit maybe. I'll have to redo it again. I might do a video on, you know, shooting paints through an airbrush because uh, I have quite a few and uh, the best one for me to use these ones with is the 0.35 I'm still waiting on my Badger uh, Chrome that I got through their happy birthday uh, celebration earlier this year uh, but this is adamantium black it's also in a dropper bottle and again it, you know you can control how much you put in there so and 
I also added a BB in it because they used to put uh, little skull heads in from what I've read online but they don't do that anymore so again to uh, even though this is already light you know it, it's not it doesn't turn that thick to this I still put one in there too again so it, it goes and hits the bottom and then it pulls paint up and then as you keep doing it long enough you know it'll mix everything up a good bit and then that way you have uh, proper properly mixed paint um, I know Badger and there's probably some other ones too they have like ones that will go down inside but you can't really fit that in there because the the diameter opening of these is just not that big so there's no way to really stick that down in there there's other things I've seen I haven't tried it yet I will probably look into that um, but Reaper is also another uh, popular one it goes with their uh, Reaper miniatures uh, supposedly you don't need to prime miniatures I'm from the old school that you know you should always put a prime coat to give the paint a, a bite give it a surface that the paint will bite into as they call it yeah I, I, I go with priming and I actually you know and they say that you can't do it because it always uh, turns to you know the, the primer doesn't seem to stick it's probably and this is just my opinion it's due to the mold release that they use when they're making their miniatures because uh, every manufacturer has some kind of mold release and what it does is like whenever the plastic gets force injected into whether it's individual pieces because I, I think that's what they are but these are like pre-assembled for imperial assault because this is greedo and what happens there is that the mold release is what keeps the parts from sticking to the mold so that they come out easier well your miniatures are coated with that so you have to wash them I use um, I just went to the dollar store picked up some like degreasing detergents probably sim similar to Dawn but it's like generically labeled and I take an old toothbrush you know like this and once I do it I scrub it up and everything and you know I'm, I push a little bit it's not gonna hurt the miniatures I'm not gonna scar them up and I push down a little bit like I said I'm not gonna like really dig down and I clean that mold release off and then I rinse it let it dry for 24 hours and then I prime it paint it and it comes out great haven't had any problems I actually did that to one of the Reaper miniatures with the Steinle Res primer and this is actually it right here and I also have a couple of other ones too but I don't know where they're at because uh, one was actually primed and painted with Zenithal prime, priming where I shot it with black first 45 gray directly from above white and I don't remember where I put it uh, it might be in there I don't know but and as you can hopefully see uh, with the lighting and everything I mean this badger primer which is acrylic I mean it actually you know it's it's on the it's on the miniature I haven't painted it yet but you can do it you just got to clean that mold release off and maybe their paints are formulated to work with that mold release so that the paints do hit it and it doesn't do like this wash watery type thing for some reason so uh but reaper's really good i've used it on a few of my miniatures for imperial assault because i was using their they did have a uh, tool on their website where you can upload a picture of something and be able to select the color and it tells you what the approximate like reaper would be might give you one might give you a couple and i use that for some of the imperial assault ones but since i've gotten a little better over five years of painting uh, i still think i'm an amateur uh, especially from following sir astro's guides i'm going to try to paint them with how he did in his techniques and and stuff and see how that fares uh, I suck at picking colors, believe me. So there's that. Uh, you know, I really like Vallejo line. They have quite a bit of line. I'm going to show you more of theirs that I have. Uh, Reaper would be my second. The next paint is 
uh, the Army Painter, and they make a decent. They they have a good set. They have 125, 124, 125. Can't remember which. And they also sell uh, spray cans of primer that a lot of their primers match the same color as their paint. So if you need to prime the miniature, but you also want it, say, I'm trying to uh, skeleton bone. They actually have a spray can primer skeleton bone you you're not only priming but you're also base coating and then you just add in the the details later uh it, again it's quite expensive it's basically like thirteen dollars fifteen dollars a can that's more than if you just go to walmart uh, i think they carry krylon and get the straight primer i haven't tried that fusion where it's supposed to like stick to plastic or anything I've heard good and bad things with that. Uh, I would just stick with the regular uh, Color Master primer where it just says primer on the label. Uh, the black works, the gray works. The white I had bad troubles with, like it didn't come out great when I was spraying it. So I would say stay away from the white. Definitely pick up a can of gray, definitely pick up a can of black. Stay away from the white. Use uh, like a white paint, or if you um, if you can, uh, a white primer maybe from Steinal Res. And I know I've used that, and it works good. But their their war paints are are really good. I really like them. Uh, again, they're also a very heavy heavily pigmented paint that the pigments will sink to the bottom. And with it, I did the same thing with that. You know, one of these helps me agitate it the gunmetal is not too bad but some of their other paints are like really heavy uh anything that will help agitate it uh to get it to mix i i'm i'm all for it but that's the four uh there's also a couple of other ones too of different manufacturers one is uh scale color um it's at scale75.com is their uh, overseas website. I think here it's scale75usa.com, something like that. Um, basically, they theirs is a similar, you know, dropper bottle type. Uh, they have a, a really nice reds, uh, really nice, awesome different metallics. Uh, I started using those because, again, Sir Astro used uh, two of their inks from their ink from their first Inktensity set. They just came out with a second one, which I picked that up. And I also used the Elven Gold because uh, he used that in one of the videos, if my memory serves me correctly. And I also used it uh, on this uh, Space Marine, which I showed in another video. And it looks really good. I really like how deep and rich it is. So for me, the Elven Gold is is totally awesome. I think it's one of the best looking golds in my opinion. But again, it's my opinion. So um, that's why I've been picking up that because, like I said, that's a really nice thing. I even did their Kickstarter for their Artist series. Uh, it's 48 paints, no metallics whatsoever. Came in a nice wooden case. Uh, you could buy it. I think it's like. 225 or 240 something like that euros so I don't know what it would be US but I, d I did it through the Kickstarter and it was I I enjoyed I still have to play with that set a little bit I mean I have it it's I've been busy with all kinds of other things uh, between making videos and just my regular life and you know doing stuff around the house that needs done especially now during lockdown uh, but yeah, the Scale 75 is another really good range, and there's also a uh, Secret Weapon. Now, again, because I, like I said, I follow Sir Astro because I couldn't pick colors to paint Star Wars figures. I mean, short of the Stormtroopers. Stormtroopers are probably the most, e well, that and the Royal Guards are about the easiest. The Secret Weapon is... Uh, is one that where he used for like rust and stuff and i think he used it in some of the marvel crisis protocol ones 
I picked up their rusting set that had like quite a few because it had like the orange rust and a couple of other ones that he used. And again, it's dropper balls. It's really nice. Um, it's basically, uh, I want to say it's a, it's almost like a wash type. It's not so much a paint. I think they do have paints, but I don't know if I'm going to buy their line. Um, I may buy some some more of theirs. I haven't really decided yet. I'm still still teetering on it because I'm going to try a lot of the Vallejo weathering techniques on some stuff that I have coming up. Um, so that's Secret Weapon. Um, and so that's the main like dropper bottle lines. Now there's some other lines too. Uh, one of them is from Badger. It's their Minotaur line and they have like a wide range. These are primarily airbrush paints that they have. You can also use them with a brush because I did. I bought, because uh, when I first started looking how to paint Imperial Assault before I discovered Sir Astro, there was a, I want to say a blog or something on Board Game Geek and he listed what paints he used for what and that's how I stumbled across because I, if my memory correctly, he used the Pestilence Flesh from the Minotaur line for the Trandosian Hunters. And I went ahead and did that. Mine turned out pretty good with it. Um, I didn't do washes or highlights or anything. It was just, you know, I slap paint on, that's it. Hey, they look good, that's it. Well, I'm going to paint the second set that I have and I'm going to try to do it that way I'm um, still waiting on him to do Bosk from Legion but I don't know if he's going to or not because he's already done because he painted one Trandosian from Imperial Assault because it was a set of four and they were all the same sculpt and he painted one of them to look like Bosk and then he gave different like jumpsuit uh, looks on the other ones so I don't know if he's going to do one of those but this will work in airbrush, regular brush. Um, I've definitely used the Pestilence Flesh. Haven't used any of the others because I picked up the complete set. So I have an extra Pestilence Flesh. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't tried them, but you know, like I said, it's not bad. Um, I still want to try to use a lot of these through the airbrush. And like I said, I've got some projects in, on my mind that will probably use these. But here's one that you could possibly use for again if you're you know if you're doing any kind of airbrushing, um, you can use it for possibly base coating or something like that. So that's the Minotaur line. Then there's uh, all clad. Uh, their lacquer like this is their metal. Uh, type I, I don't think they have any kind of well they do have like a black primer and they also have like a gloss black paint but other than that I think the rest of it's just pretty much uh, like these metal like this is uh, black chrome I bought chrome to do C-3PO he looks so good he looks like he does on the movies where he has the silver right leg and the gold tone because I did a, a yellow uh, candy coat over top of the chrome especially I will I will let you know on this if you do use uh, their chrome if you haven't already if, if you're a first timer once you put the chrome on the figure or the model or whatever you're going to do and you want to give it like a yellow like really nice shiny chrome look which I might find something to, to do that I might show you uh, make sure you put a gloss varnish over it because if you hit the chrome, which is this guy right here, uh, if you hit this chrome with anything, as soon as it touches it, it dulls it immediately. And that's I, I found that out by actually uh, emailing them about it. And they told me that, yeah, you have to hit it with a, with a gloss varnish, which I don't think their instructions on that said so. Uh, but yeah, if you use any of the candies, because this is the transparent yellow right here, and that's what I hit the chrome with to give it C-3PO look, and it just looks fantastic. 
So that's the all clad. Uh, it is a lacquer. It is going to have an odor to it. Um, so you will need to have some kind of venting to vent the fumes out or, you know, hey, if you want to get high, go right ahead. Uh, another brand that, again, I also started out with, but I tend, I don't use it as much as I used to, is uh, Tester's Model Master. It's not a bad acrylic. Um, I have used this French blue on the Stormtroopers, uh, on the, those vents on the side of their masks. It's not a bad paint. Uh, I don't like the um, fact that it has the twist off cap. Um, for me, it's I'm not a big fan of that anymore. And it also skins like it did. But yeah, I mean, it's and I don't want to stick a BB in there because this is a glass jar and metal and glass don't get along. So, um, like I said, the the Model Master series isn't bad. Um, I need to get that Badger stir so I can stir this up. But for these, it's not bad. You know, um, they're relatively inexpensive. Good, decent range of colors at uh, places like Hobby Lobby. If you have a Hobby Town USA near you, they also carry it too. Uh, but like I said, they they don't really have a big line of of colors, so you're gonna be limited. Okay, and now for some paints that are outside, and then I'll go over some of the rest of the ones that I have for uh, Vallejo. Golden fluid and high fluid acrylics, or high flow acrylics. Uh, these are really good. These are not as thick as, say, the Vallejo and the Army Painter. Um, it is thick, and I do use a ball bearing. I put one in uh, this because I was testing it out through the airbrush. Uh, I do mix it up. There was a video on Vallejo's YouTube page where... Uh, he was showing you how to use the Mecha Color primers and everything. And what he did was he would drop two drops of paint to, to one drop flow improver to one drop thinner. So basically for that, he's dropping... For every two drops of paint, there's a drop of this and a drop of this that goes in it. So if you do ten drops of paint, it would be five drops of flow improver and five drops of thinner. So I'm going to try that out to see if it works relatively decently. Uh, if it does, that's going to be the recipe I'm going to use. And I'm going to try it with all of them, like including uh, Reaper, uh, Army Painter, Scale Color, uh, even the Minotaur, um, just to see if, if it works. I may even test it with this somehow, if I can... Uh, get the drops to come up and be able to drop them down it seemed like it worked because i think i did try it but i can't remember exactly um my brain does that from time to time a lot <laughs> it's been doing that since i was a kid but yeah so i'm going to try that and see what happens um hopefully between the flow improver and the thinner it'll thin it and keep it from drying on my uh, needle for my airbrush so that is that now for because like i said i did use this and i did use um even though i know this is liquid text because i want to use this up before i start using the stuff from uh golden because i have a lot of their airbrush uh medium but when i first tested this i thinned this out a little bit to this and i mixed it up in a container like this and i got it to where when I took, as I was stirring it up, and I was running it up the side here, and if it kind of runs down like how you would like swirl milk and it has that film and you see it slowly starting to go down, I got it to pretty much that consistency and I was practicing with uh, airbru airbrush, uh, just making lines and stuff, you know, because I want to do more than just 
priming. And it actually worked really good. Um, like I said, it's still a little thick because you can you can hear how it's thick there. Now they also have the high flow acrylics, which is thinned down even more because on this here, I don't think it says anywhere that you can airbrush it or anything, but I looked online and I even think on their site it does say you can with proper thinning. This here, this ultramarine, it shows airbrush, it shows paintbrush, it shows like a, a fountain pen. It also shows a marker, which I did get one of those with the Kickstarter from uh, Scale 75, where I can put the paint in here, it'll come through, and then I can just draw like that. Uh, I also bought a couple of uh, Dale Rownies too. So that means it's very versatile that you can, you know, use it in all these different med uh, means of, of painting. Where this here doesn't really say it, uh, it's probably more designed for regular brush. But that's why I'm going to try that, that, that recipe that I told you of the two paint, one flow, one thinner. And like I said, see if it helps. Because if it, if it helps with all that, I've got a lot of golden over here that I picked up from a store that was going out of business. Uh, this is the only one I actually bought new from a store uh, I bought from Joanne Fabrics. But these here, I can, and I, I believe I tested it by just dropping it straight in and it airbrushes fine. I mean, it might still need to be thinned a little bit, but maybe not as much as this. But golden, you can definitely do that with. Um... The Liquitex does not have that. I mean, yeah, you can mix this in with their paint. I haven't tried it. I do have a couple of tubes of their Liquitex Basics. Uh, it's the uh, tubes that have the black markings on them, not the, the white ones, which to me I think are more like student, where these are more professional. I haven't tried mixing any of this with it and see if I can either A, paint with it, or... Uh, or shoot it through an airbrush so that's another experiment but that's the different types and my recommendations for uh, miniature painting would be Vallejo would be number one uh, Reapers number two this is number three which is the army painter uh, scale color is four these I recommend, I don't have a number, that's just because the fact is they're more washes to give you rust effects. They might have some other paints too. I was mainly looking at it for some of the rusting effects and, and some stuff that Sir Astro did in some of his videos of what I'm trying to paint. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four. This is number five, and the reason why it's number five has, is a couple of things. As I, one, as I alluded to earlier, these are really expensive, even buying them online. And I'm saying for buying them from, you know, like actual retailers um, or, you know, online stores, these are really expensive. I mean, on Reaper, I mean, on uh, Games Workshop site itself, that's like $4.55. And some of these have actually went up. I mean, and you're only getting 12 milliliters of paint for five bucks or almost five bucks. That's not a bargain. I mean, I can go to Walmart, get it, and it's an even larger can now, bigger than the ones that I have of the Krylon primer, and it's like four bucks, and you get quite a bit. Again, I'm not that big of, I mean, it. this hobby's expensive. Between the tools, the paints, the miniatures themselves, whether they're games, just Reaper figures, you know, whatever you're painting, everything's expensive, you know got to try to save money so that's why these are number five they're just a, a tad bit especially for first-time painters okay I don't recommend you move into these for a while and I didn't until I found Sir Astro's um, videos on YouTube and I started you know following those painting seeing how he was doing things and stuff like that these are once you like I said have experience definitely you know go to Hobby Lobby pick these up you know 4.99 40 percent off you're getting like two bucks off you're paying three bucks for this size bottle it's a buck and a half cheaper that buck and a, a buck and a half or it's 455 it, yeah it's 455 unless they've went certain ones went up 
uh, you know, you know, you're taking that buck fifty-five and applying it to the next bottle. Um, now the sad thing is you can only buy one at a time, forty percent off coupon. But hey, you know, you go in one day, pick it up, leave, come back in the next day, pick it up, leave, or better yet, come back in a couple of hours because they probably won't remember that you were already there. So basically, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend these. Pick these up at Hobby Lobby. Pick up the basic you know like whatever all they have uh, they might sit there they might age a little bit but they're still pretty good because some of the ones I got are quite old uh, when I picked them up and they're they're still hanging in there because I, I still use them but definitely pick these ones up first uh, you can find these relatively inexpensive couple of different sites uh, you might have to search for them these I think you can get around two dollars and something uh, through miniature-giant.com and if you go to bluegblugee.com uh, they're relatively inexpensive there too uh, again you can probably find these online relatively cheap uh, somewhere these these are different uh, you're going to have a little harder time getting these uh, relatively inexpensive because they are overseas and the U.S. I don't know if the if the USA website has a, has a place here or it's just a website here that ties into the their main office in, in Spain or wherever over in Europe. Uh, but they do sometimes hold like a 15% off. And it's a couple of times a year. I know there's one in where they take two weeks off in September. Uh, they have a sale, not for the whole two weeks. I think maybe a week or so. I can't remember when, but I know there's one there. There's also the Black Friday. They just had a Father's Day one recently where it was 15% off. So uh, definitely wait for one of those type of sales. You'll save yourself some money, especially because of the whole conversion rate. From there just to ours uh, luckily the value of our dollar to their euro is actually up decent I don't know what it's like right now because of the whole economy thing but definitely um, wait for one of their sales uh, secret weapon I have not found a place that sells these anywhere online other than secret weapons website so unfortunately pretty much going to have to pay for these again that's why i don't really buy a whole lot of theirs because i can't you know like i said i can't get some kind of discount because as far as i know nobody sells these but on their site uh these go on sale uh, especially the whole set of them at uh, amazon uh, I know if you go to Origins Game Fair, you might get a deal because there's a guy that sells Badger stuff there. So, yeah, you, uh, I bought the whole set there. I got it for under 100 bucks, So, that's not too bad. Uh, again, these are good for airbrush, paintbrush. Um, so, if you're at Origins Game Fair, hopefully it's going to happen this year. Basically, uh, look at Amazon. You might, because I think like sometimes it's on it costs like 150 bucks something like that i have seen it where it's gone on sale but it goes back up so those are the places where you can get some of these the the cheapest like i said this the citadels and the secret weapons are going to be a little harder to uh get fairly reasonable because of that these uh, you can get at ScaleHobbyist.com. Uh, Scale Hobbyist, they have decent pricing on it because um, I've seen these go really high on some other sites. But definitely, um, these are definitely good if you're definitely doing a lot of metallics like cars, airplanes. Um, again, you will have to wear like a face respirator especially if it's in your house uh, definitely do not have servers running like this so that the vapors go through and could possibly catch fire <laughs> that's a big no no um, or if you have a, a vent you know like an air spray booth that has a vent it's punched through a wall to vent the va vapors outside that's fine which is, eventually I'm gonna get that so yeah I mean these are really good just you know look out for your health 
and everything else because uh, the vapors are flammable and if you spray enough of it it could happen it hasn't happened to me because i i'm careful so but these are good like i said if you're going to do a lot of cars a lot of vehicle type things uh, if you're doing uh, I know on their site they have like they showed that uh, they painted Robocop with it uh, they also did an Iron Man with it which looks really really good that might be something I might do for my Iron Man for Marvel's Crisis Protocol but again sorry if I got a little low there uh, but yeah I mean these are these are good uh, it's all clad all clad 2 yeah, allclad2.com is the site for that because I just read it off the bottle. Uh, that, that's where you can at least get the information. But definitely go to scalehobbyist.com. Uh, they sell these. Like I said, you'll 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 save yourself a few bucks. Because um, I don't know how much. I don't think you could buy it through their thing. And if you can, they show you like where you can get it. And I don't know if Scale Hobbyist is on that list. But I clicked through a lot of their resellers. And went to other ones, and they were more expensive. And Scale Hobbyist is where I found these fairly reasonable. So, so that's why I recommend them. They actually have good prices on Vallejo too. Uh, again, you can get these. These aren't bad either. Um, like I said, I just don't like the. You know, I started using these, and then I ran into problems where stuff was drying. It dries on around the lid top because I was also stupid, and dipped my brush in the in the jar and not put it on a palette and then do it that way uh like i said again they're not bad their color range is decent if you're doing simplistic stuff you could probably get away with it on most stuff if you have like space marines or anything that's going to have a lot of detail a lot of different colors i don't think uh, and i i suck at mixing colors and i really do especially on my own if somebody else does it and i can reproduce it i'm fine but these uh these are basically, you know, like I said, I, I, I wouldn't recommend using these much, uh, unless, like I said, unless it's very basic stuff, like maybe terrain. Um, like I said, you're doing simplistic stuff. You're not doing anything overly fancy. If you're not doing washes or anything, and like I said, it's just you know, like barns and cars. You could probably get away with this. These these are not badly priced. I don't remember how much they go for. Um, if you're going to, like I said, if you're wanting to do a lot of airbrushing and that, a lot of these thin down with, uh, either airbrush medium or the airbrush thinner and flow improver, uh, maybe a couple of drops of water. I don't think he used that. I think he just used those and the paint. These are, these, these would be good too, uh, from Golden. They're a little more expensive, but you're getting an ounce. You're getting a big bottle, a big one ounce bottle of this stuff. And the high flows already have the dropper lids to it, where these are just the flip up, you know, type. But you know, these aren't bad if you're if you're looking for like solid colors and you don't want to, you know, waste your time with a bunch of different blacks and I got stuff on my finger somehow. Yay! Oh, how in the world I did that. You get to see me clean myself up. I might, I'll probably end up cutting that out. I don't know how in the world that happened. Okay. Ninety-one percent alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Ninety-one percent. It will literally eat the crap out of this stuff. All right. Now that I did that, that's definitely going to be at the end of the video. Um, 
but yeah, Golden is uh, a decent brand for for doing. Uh, like I said, if you're doing like solid colors and stuff like that, you might be able to mix them and, and stuff like that. And I think Golden, I want to say Golden also has where you can, um, I think the same thing, you upload a picture, click on it, and it tells you the percentages and what paints to make that thing, which I may look into that for some of this stuff to maybe help. And again, with the drop system, if it says 90% this, 5% this, that there, so then you go nine drops of this, one drop of that, one drop of that. Uh, but yeah, the golden the golden isn't bad, and like I said, I'm gonna experiment with a lot of the stuff that I have. Uh, there's one other brand I I didn't mention, and it's uh, Tamiya or Tamaya, however you want to pronounce it. It's not a bad paint. It's also a very smelly paint. Um, I've used it for the lightsaber glow because I bought their clear red. I should pick up their clear green and their clear blue so that I can paint the swords for the lightsabers a white metallic and then put that over top of it to give it that nice, like, if you look at the movies, it has the, like almost the very white center and then it kind of sh changes shade as it goes out to the edge. Uh, it's not a bad paint. Uh, like I said, again, it's smelly. <sighs> I don't know how in the world people can use this stuff. And I really don't. A um, friend of mine gave me this gold, and I haven't really used it. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 definitely got a smell to it. Um, like I said, I want to say it's a decent paint. Again, if you have some way of venting the fumes out, uh, definitely do that. Uh, it also has here flammable right there so again this is a warning that this kind of stuff if you have fans similar to what I have in my servers where they could cause a spark if there's enough fumes it can set it can start a fire and that's just something I don't want to deal with uh, it's okay to use like I said if you use a little bit of it I know Sir Astro's used a combination of it and a couple of other paints to do like blood for like zombies and stuff like that when he did the zombicide uh, painting which he stopped doing that but to me is not bad. Again, I, I kind of rank it right here with this. It's like, it, it's okay to use depending upon your situation, but not, not all that, not all that good uh, from everything. Just certain things. So as far as that goes, uh, to me, uh, that. Now for the rest of the Vallejo line, uh, I started picking up some of their uh, metal color series paint. Uh, I already had their gunmetal gray, which was nice. Uh, I was still trying to figure out like how to use it, and I probably have. But I picked up a few other colors because I have a great Mazinger Z model, which I'll probably show like me priming it, painting it, maybe even taking off some of the rough edges on it and everything from cutting it off of the spurs. And this stuff's really nice. Um, the colors are really nice. I think it's going to look really good. It's going to give the plastic model, it's a Bandai model, and it's snapped together. I think it's going to give a really nice look, really nice shine to it. So, uh, this is definitely what I'm using for a lot of it. And they started putting uh, shakers in it, which, you know, you can hear. So, you know, which is weird because my Gunmetal Gray, and you heard that one. Here's, here's the Gunmetal Gray. If you hear how light that is, that's because I had to drop BBs in it because this one didn't come with it, but they started putting them in everything else because even in the metal varnish, well, the metal varnish they didn't do, but in all the other ones that I got, like here's the uh, exhaust manifold. And see, they actually put that in there to help mix it up. So it's nice that they're putting it in. It just would have been nice if there was a little more consistency and they would have started it way back whenever it started. Uh, they also have game color. This is more geared towards it at the time uh, when Citadel had certain paints labeled a certain way. And again, if you go to uh, acrylosavallejo.com, you can download the sheet of this and it has like a conversion chart of this color matches this color in, in the Citadel paint range. Well, they've changed their names and changed the colors a little bit. So 
doesn't actually quite match up. Uh, but the game color range is for their for the fantasy again works and stuff like that. Uh, it's also a real thick paint, and you can hear that it's really quiet. Uh, this is one of their lines. I have all of it. I have all of the model color. They also just came out with a Fantasy Pro line. Uh, it's it was in an assistant. I don't know if Noctura Models made it or not. Uh, they just completed a Kickstarter for their own line of paint, and they sell this Vallejo stuff on their site. Uh, again, they're over in Spain right now with everything that's going on. They don't know when they're going to start shipping. Luckily, I bought the I bought the last two sets because Vallejo has a four uh, eight paint set from this Fantasy Pro line and I picked it up. I picked up all four of them. So I have all of them and I'm hoping that some of the colors in there match some of the colors of their actual Kickstarter line. I got a feeling that they're not. Uh, I might buy a set and try it out. I don't know yet. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, once it comes out. Uh, there's the Pale Flesh uh, from, and it has Noctura on the label and it's the fantasy pro this is another line this will also go I want to say will go hand in hand with the game color range for doing fantasy models orcs you know Thor stuff like that uh, noctura models.com I think is the website for noctura and you could check out like some of their bus I have some bus coming in from their Kickstarter because I did that which I'll be painting that stuff just to try out different things uh, this is also a part of the model rust I want to say uh, that came in that one of those rusting sets and I'm trying to see that's 505 yeah because uh, in the pamphlet here 76 505 is for the bigger one I think it's gonna be about this size it's gonna be like 32 milliliters for the rust, I just got a sample little, you know, 17 milliliter bottle, which is fine because, like I said, I'm trying things out. Um, so for that, uh, you could probably get some of those in smaller ones, I want to say. I don't know how many, uh, but that's that. And then here is the Mecha Color. Uh, this is more for probably like the Gundams and big, you know, models like that they have a complete set i haven't picked up the complete set but i did pick up a few bottles of this and i did not put a bb in this one uh, but this is the light rust wash it also has a 505 so these are probably i want to say that i got a feeling that they're the same color and i really do let's see So there's that. That's the, the model wash. And then here is this one. Okay. So from visibly from my eye, I'm going to say that they look the same. They truly look the same. They look the same color. So, at least I know uh, not to buy the model wash and little bottles, which I've, I knew that because it has model wash on it. Uh, I'm going to definitely buy that in the bigger 32 milliliter size, a lot more money. But I'm definitely not going to buy the weathering light rust in the mecha color now if all you're doing is gundams and if you pick up the whole set that's fine because it makes sense because you're gonna either hand paint it or maybe with a airbrush with a really fine tip you know this will probably go in like a one uh, point one five millimeter needle or millimeter nozzle will probably go through it real good because it's just a wash it's just basically like an ink almost uh, not exactly but but yeah, it's the same same color. Okay, so I have two of the same. But yeah, these are their other lines like Model Wash. 
uh, mecha color, which, like I said, I do want to get it, but I, I think I'm going to definitely look through... I got a weird feeling, and I'm going to have to look at the, the, the last three numbers, like how this one has... It's 69.505, and this is 74.505. I'm going to have to do that and see if it's matching corresponding names and numbers in the other lines, because if that's the case... I don't have to buy the whole set. I just have to buy the matching color, you know, the, the colors that don't match. But if they all match, then I've already got it, and I don't need to buy it at all. Just me. Um, but, yeah, these are their two other lines. Um, the model wash I'll definitely get because if I want to stop using Citadel washes, and if they have a wash that's comparable to the Citadel wash, it doesn't have to be exactly like it, but if it's similar in properties and characteristics, once I burn through the Citadel crap, those 24 milliliter, because they changed that, because they made those bigger, uh, yeah, because I'm not paying almost eight bucks for that, because if I can get that stuff for like five at like Scale Hobbyist or somewhere like that, five, six dollars, that saves me a couple of bucks. Again, I can use that savings towards other things. That's the way I look at it. I try to stretch my dollars the best I can. This also goes back to my painting on the cheap, which I'll include that. Uh, for the tools and everything. Another one is their Panzer Aces line, which is uh, more geared towards military colors, but some, like, games, even fantasy games, sometimes have military colors, so it depends on what you want to paint. But these are have a different, like, this is an actual paint that's, wow, that's amazing. I picked that, like, rust out of the thing. <laughs> okay. But this is an actual paint. I don't even know if I put a ball in this thing or not. Let's go ahead and do that now. So, and this is how you do it. Okay. Oh man, this stuff's really thick. Okay, so yeah, it's Panzer Aces. Uh, again, that's also a good line because, like I said, I think it's got other colors that are not in the regular model color that's more geared towards painting military figures. Um, there's also the Game Air line, and I didn't grab that. Um, I don't think I have... No, I don't think I do. No, I don't. thought I had one out. Um, no, but I got a lot of model, model or game color. Uh, but it's model air. It's the air version. I think it has a couple of extra paints that the model color doesn't. And I know there was supposed to be like a uh, uh, another like eight or sixteen colors added to the model color airline. And I saw a video and I can't remember where it is. I'd have to look for it. But uh, I picked these up too at Hobby Lobby. They also have some some model air sets. They don't have the actual bottles on the thing. That's mostly um, model color that's on the shelves. But they do have hanging on the walls over in that area uh, a few of the sets that have model air. I picked up the basic set. It has uh, olive green and some others. Now these paints, as you can hear, I put a uh, ball bearing in it. Uh, so, and these are stainless steel. Make sure that they are actual stainless steel so they don't rust because they'll rust inside of here. Uh, these paints are similar to like the Reaper. Uh, and I've heard a lot of things where some people don't um, thin them out. Some people do. Again, it depends on your application. Uh, these can be done with both brush and airbrush. Uh, they're basically more designed for doing airbrushing, but you can use a brush with them. I have done done that with these too. Uh, they're really nice. The game air is also like it's it's a it's a lot less colors than because you could buy the complete set of the game air. Doesn't have everything as the as the game color, and you can shoot it through an airbrush. Um, and that's part of the reason why I like Vallejo because they have a wide range of colors. In a bunch of different sets I, I, and I know it's a bunch of different sets and you have to buy each set but that's because each set has different characteristics um, like I said the game color model color those are thicker uh, they also have this new fantasy line which is colors outside of game color they're not the same I've already seen those 
it just does, it just depends on what you're going to paint. If you're painting mostly fantasy in it, I would go with the game color, game air if you want to do airbrushing, and the Noctura's uh, Fantasy Pro that Vallejo sells. Uh, also, the uh, Scale 75 isn't too bad for that too because they got really nice, bright, vibrant reds, dark reds in their one red set and it also comes with some guides on how to paint things too uh, again citadel i wouldn't like i said just because it's so stinking expensive um these wouldn't be unless you absolutely need them uh i'm not saying that there's not some decent stuff like these are these this uh warp block bronze is pretty nice for doing bases which i don't know if i don't think i have any painted up we're ready to go. I don't think. I'm trying to see. Uh, oh yeah, I do. Um, but yeah, I, I dry brushed this part of it, and then I painted the pipes with the warp lock bronze. And it, it's not bad. These are the bases that Sir Astro uses for uh, Imperial Assault, and it, this is ready to go for whatever miniature that needs it. Uh, yeah, here's a good example of this one, too. Um, I think he also highlighted it with something else. I'd have to see how he did it. And he also put a little bit of snow on here to uh, for... Uh, it's not Verena Talos. I can't remember her, her name from uh, Return to Hoth. But, yeah, basically, you know, the Warp Lock Bronze is, is really nice. Um... So that's like I said, there's some colors that I like, some colors I don't. Um, definitely trying to see if there's a way I can kind of get cheaper versions of some of the colors from Citadel, like Nagaroth Knight and some of these other ones, because like I said, it's just so, so expensive. So expensive. It's it's not even funny. Um, but that is... Uh, and this is the primers that I use right here, the Steinal Res primer. Um, yeah, I, it's it's a really nice, simple, and easy application. You can brush it on, you can airbrush it on. It's not badly priced. Uh, it does say that you got to have at least a 0.5 milli millimeter uh, or larger nozzle. Uh, that is true. I tried shooting this through a .35 when I had my Neo before I realized my Neo was messed up. Uh, it's also in my airbrush recommendations. I'm not saying it's a bad airbrush or anything. I think I got one that somebody had. It was defective. They took it back to the store. Either got a different one or they got their money back, one or the other. I inherited it. It's not bad. I'm going to use it as a guest airbrush if like one of my friends want to try it or not. That way they're not wrecking my new ones or my, my better ones. Um, but this stuff's uh, really nice, works really well. Um, he's actually primered in black, uh, and I did the zenithal highlighting on this, the Space Marine too. But uh, these come in colors, uh, you can get them in 2, 4, 16, and 32 ounces. Um, I still have a few big bottles of some of these colors uh, in my closet behind me I'm probably just gonna stay with just getting four ounce bottles two reasons number one when you airbrush with these I will be honest with you it does not take a whole lot of primer dropped in the cup to, to do it because it atomizes so fine um, so yeah I think I'm just gonna stay with like the eight ounce or the four ounce bottles of these and no more than that plus not only that they fit in there really nice uh, I also have a silver, probably going to drop a ball bearing in this thing, but I have their silver, they call it metal, but it's silver, and I mean, you, if you could see it, I don't know how well the video is going to show, but like you can almost see like the metal, par the metal particles just like separating, like running. I mean, it's, it's, this is really nice primer. I totally recommend it. Um, probably going to also pick up some of Vallejo's primers too, because they have, they might have some colors that Steinal Res doesn't, and 
to me, I don't think the, the Vallejo primer is back because I'm going to try out their gloss black uh, primer. This is supposed to be from the metal color line, but it just says black gloss black surface primer, which to me doesn't make sense, but what do I know? Um, but I'm going to try it out on the Great Mazinger Z um, build and everything to give the metallic paints because with, uh, and I forgot to mention, with these lacquers you have to have a gloss black coat on the miniature or on the product for this stuff to really shine so and I've seen people with videos online where they just did it with Vallejo's gloss black primer or their gloss black paint and it worked out really well with this so you don't actually need to use theirs which I have a big like four ounce bottle of uh their gloss black paint, uh, which I will use that up when I can vent the fumes out. But that's my recommendation. I highly recommend Vallejo first. Reaper is definitely second because they have a good choice. Third choice, uh, because of the fact of how many paints they have, I do recommend uh, Army Painter. Uh, same thing. They have a good number of different paints and product lines and stuff like that. Uh, Definitely this one. I recommend this one if you're going to do like a lot of rusting in that, which I'm also going to look into the Vallejo products, like the the washes. They also have pigment powders. I've seen a few videos of theirs on how to use that, which is something else I want to try to experiment, especially with doing the Walking Dead uh, all-out war cars from that game. And I definitely, definitely want to use these uh, Minotaur paints for stuff. These here, like I said, are just uh, additional paints that you can pick up um, for little doodad type things. Which, like I said, you might find a color in, you know, the acrylic uh, Model Master line that you know might give something a little bit of flair. But yeah, so definitely Vallejo because, like I said, they have a huge selection, huge color. Like I know their model and air, and their game and air, pretty much have colors that duplicate, but. You're getting ones that are like, hey, I want to paint this whole tank or this whole truck in olive green, but I don't want to use a brush and get brush strokes. Well, you can put drops of that and just use an airbrush and, and paint it olive green. And then you can accent the rest of it with uh, rust and chipping and, and all kinds of other stuff like that. So those are my recommendations. Like I said, this isn't until you really really get up there because these paints are really expensive like i said if you if you if you shop around you can find decent pricing and you really can uh again i will definitely link the airbrush recommendation video and the uh painting on the cheap so if you want to check out any of those and as i said before if you like what i'm doing please like and subscribe uh hit the bell icon and select all and as i always say have a good day